browser, what are you doing? Sometimes you see something where there seemingly just isn't a logical explanation. And I always figured that two of the biggest browsers, Firefox and Chrome, that they would handle things in a calculated, equal way. But boy, oh boy, could I have not been more wrong. So let me take you on a mind-boggling journey through these browsers. I was playing around with this little snippet of HTML. So we have this simple SVG tag here with an onload that will print out a one. But we also have a script tag and this script tag will replace the inner HTML of the body with an SVG tag that also has an onload, but this time will log two to the console. Now, time to place your bets. What do you think will be printed out to the console when we render this page? Now, I figured that the browser would parse this document tree and first of all, would load in the SVG that's already there. It would load it and thus execute the JavaScript printing A1. Then I imagined the browser would move on to the script tag, which will replace the inner HTML of the body and print A2. So let's see what happens here. I render the page in the latest Google Chrome version and it prints out A2. Okay, that's not what I expected, but I think that's okay, that, that's reasonable, I can get behind that. So now Firefox, it's your turn. Will you do the same thing? No, Firefox prints out a one. What? These browsers behave in the exact opposite way. So I started looking through the documentation for an explanation of this behavior, and guess what? I didn't find anything. But then luckily someone messaged me on Discord saying that uh, they had asked the Firefox staff and it turns out that Firefox had to remove the ability for the onload of SVG tags to trigger when they are being put in the DOM using inner HTML as a fix for a CVE, and that's CVE 2020-15676 to be exact. Now, Rennypack got this really great tattoo on his arm and this is his, his actual arm and an actual tattoo. And Rennie, I sincerely hope that your targets are not running on Firefox, man. <laughs> now this should be the end of the tale, but it's not. Because SVG is not the only tag that can have an onload attribute. The style tag can also have it, but obviously the browsers will just handle that in the same way, right? No. With an SVG tag, Chrome decided to print out a two, and that exact same code with style tags prints out a one and two, in, in the way we reasoned before. Okay, what about Firefox? One and two as well. Okay, at last we found some equality here and the SVG tag is probably just weird, but for all others it will print out one and two. But what about the iframe tag? Well, Chrome prints out the expected, a one and two, that's great. What about Firefox? Well, Firefox printed out a one for the SVG tag, a one and, one and two for the style tag. And what does it print out for the iframe tag? A two? At this point, Firefox is just running through all of the options with random tags. There are a couple more tags that can have the onload option, but they work differently. For example, the image and input tags will only trigger their onload when they load a valid image. So let's try them out. And for the image tag, Chrome and Firefox, they agree. They should print out a one and a two, and they do. Now, I don't think we even need to try it out with the input tag. It'll work the same way, right? Both have images, they will both just do the same thing. No. Chrome, come on, we had a good thing going here. You, you didn't have to ruin it, it was all equal. At this point, my head is starting to explode. But luckily, now everything will get better because for the link tag, it executes when it loads a valid link and luckily, both browsers agree. And I agree with the browsers as well. So let's end on a positive note saying that we figured it all out and let's do that with the last tag, the body tag. We should see that the right answer is a one and a two. So browsers, let's see it. Oh no. To finish this video, I quickly wanted to say that this is obviously all banter and, and just a bit of fun. It's incredibly difficult to build a browser and to take every little detail into account. So this is not at all meant as criticism for those amazing developers. However, if you have an explanation for any of the behavior that I mentioned, 
then please comment it down below, preferably with links to documentation or something so we can all learn. I hope you enjoyed this random one-off video and I hope to see you back for the next one. Take care.